driving along. And all of a sudden, I see this. I also had a rubber burning smell at the same time. Let's investigate. Let's put a meter on the battery and see if we have any uh, charging voltage here. It should be around 14.5 volts. That's just the battery right there, no charge. Now we're going to go directly to the big lug on the alternator, the output, and see if there's anything coming off there at all as far as charge voltage. And there isn't. It's exactly the same as the battery, so the cables and connections look good. Now we have to check for excitation voltage on the alternator, and this intake assembly is in the way, so we're going to just quickly take that off. Very simple. If the 12 volt excitation voltage is missing, the problem is somewhere else then, um, such as a fuse or wiring, not the alternator. a long thin screwdriver. Get it down like this. Thought I had it. Yeah, this is just a jumper. Jumping over from this one. I couldn't get this one out now. I'll get it out later. This is the one we have to probe anyway. Turn the ignition on. I got a test light hooked up, grounded on the battery negatives. I'll pull this connector out. Okay, nothing on the far right pin, nothing on the middle pin, and there we have the excitation, which is uh, needs to go to the rotor to get things going. I wanted to double check this with a meter because I believe there should be two 12 volts, and see there we have 11.1, which may not be enough to get the trouble light going. And, in, and battery voltage on the far left. So it's all there. Now if that excitation voltage was missing, we'd want to check the fuse. And here in our manual we see that it's a F11, a 20 amp fuse, marked alternator field. There's a location under the hood. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. That would be it right there. So since the alternator is getting what it needs, it is the suspect here. So we're going to take it out, check it further. 10 millimeter. I have a separate uh, video on the surf belt and I'll throw a link up for that. So I've pulled the uh, tensioner to the right and I, put, I stick a holding tool. It's actually a little, little butter knife that I modified, 13 millimeter. I can slip it off. Now you've got are these two 10 millimeters and it's 10 up here and out it should come. Now we can get something in there and unplug that last little single connector. so much easier to remove this single connector when you uh, can see what you're doing. The little lock lever on there that I'm prying up with a dental pick. Small screwdriver would work too. Mm. 
We're going to take this apart as far as we have to to see what failed in it. T20. We'll start with the voltage regulator slash brush assembly. Wow, this brush is gone. The inner brush completely disintegrated. You know, I'd smelt a burning smell when this initially happened. That may be of I. Okay, it's eight millimeter. I want to have one more. I want to have a look under this cover. Have a look at the slip rings. We need to remove this cover. There's a nut under there that has to come off. It's 11 millimeter. So the inner slip ring, take a look at it. Look at all the gouges and pits and burn marks. In particular, right here is a deep gouge. So we kind of get a picture of what happened here. Slip rings would also be needed on this alternator. So I'm going to put a new AC Delco alternator in there. I may eventually fix the other one, but sourcing parts could be a, an issue. It looks pretty impressive. I priced out OEM at Ford, $265. No installation, not really a big deal. So I'll just speed through most of this so as not to bore you. I like to include torque specs, couldn't find them for this. So I'll just do it by feel. I'll let you see my uh, the effort, the amount of the amount of turns I make to kind of give you an idea.
Okay, we're alternating, regulating, rectifying, and charging now. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe. I've got more good stuff on the way.